color correction is fun. Yeah, I'm gonna try real hard not to look at the screen, but I might mess up sometimes. Yeah. Two intro songs, that's how I'm feeling today. Hey there, internet, long time no see. Am I right? Since like, I don't know, July of last year or something? Doesn't matter, I'm back because I have something here in my hands which is simultaneously both long awaited and yet not really long awaited because I actually just learned that it existed in like late December or early January. It'll make sense in a second. This is, um, oh here, here's a real nice logo for you. Limited run, if you know anything about the games industry, this is a special limited run, hence the name, physical edition of a Switch game that I'll show you in just a second after I, I open the box. This is an unboxing video. I'm realizing right here in this moment, um, my first YouTube video and now this, my first YouTube video in like way too long, both feature boxes. Uh, but as you know, who cares? Weird thing about this, I had to order this box separately. I think had I not, it would have just come with what's inside the box, like loose and damage in shipping is an issue. Plus it's, it's a cool box. Forever physical, I appreciate that. Basically what they do is they take really popular or sort of niche indie uh, digital only games and they give them physical releases. That's what this company does, that's what this is. And the game in question is, do 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 do, Hyper Light Drifter. Look at that, just, just look at it. Look at it, it's so pretty. Okay, so here's the background information. This game, I don't know when it came out, but this was a Kickstarter game. This was a Kickstarter game back in, hold on. 2013? Holy cow, I'm old. I didn't know it was that long ago. <laughs> it's eight years. This is one of the first things I ever kickstarted. I went through this whole kick where I kickstarted a lot of things. Some might say that this was the only one that was like really, really successful. I'm fine with that because it's an incredible game. Seriously, if you've never played this game or heard of this game, I encourage you to just go look up the trailer right now. Um, maybe I'll put a link in the description. The trailer alone is one of the most beautifully artistic things that I've ever seen. It was described gameplay wise by the creator as a combination of like old school top down Zelda games meets Dark Souls meets, I think they said some Diablo in there. It's this isometric top down, gorgeous pixel art adventure action game um, that doesn't have like a single piece of text in the entire game. It's like really fast paced action. You have swords and guns and you have to like bounce back and forth between the two in this balletic, embrace of combat. I should put that on the box somewhere, a balletic embrace of combat. I just came up with that. Uh, a perfect blurb for in fact, the back of the box, which lists the contents of this special edition. A reversible cover, a game manual, which I'm insanely excited for, I'll get there. A soundtrack, a keychain, a lenticular Rosetta card, which is an alphabet translation thing from the game and a poster. I'm excited, let's. Let's go. Looks like, oh, it all just comes out in one, one big blurb. Eh. Well, first off, for my interest at present, one of the least exciting things, simply because I'm sort of in the midst of several other games right now, I will probably get this to this in a little bit. On that note, special sidebar, Games and Life is also back, y'all. I'm like doing this thing for real, this thing being YouTube. I'm currently playing Link's Awakening. The first episode is out this coming Tuesday. If you're watching this after the date releases, you can click the link right up here. Yes, no, up here. Dang, it's been too long. Who knows, maybe afterward I'll play this. Uh, who's to say? If you're interested in that, let me know. But this is the real meat of the thing. Wow, that's a cool keychain. Come out, person. Come, come on, are you, are you taped on the back? Oh, maybe I need to untape you. Oh my word, get out. What? <clears throat> okay, figured it out. This thing is like your little assistant character. Think of it as Navi, except it doesn't go, hey, listen, every five seconds. In fact, it doesn't really do anything other than help you unlock doors and stuff, but it flies along with you. And it's like your little friend. Hey camera, could you focus on the thing maybe? Please. I don't want to do the beauty YouTuber thing. 
Don't make me do the beauty. Fine, I'll do the beauty YouTuber thing. There you go. Buy it at Sephora. Oh. This is so cool. This is so cool. Okay, I, don't, I really hope I can capture this on camera. This is the Rosetta card. If you look at it right now, it should. Yeah, it's like an alien alphabet. But then I tilt it and it's English. Alien, English. So there's like all sorts of secret stuff in the game world. And with this, I mean, I decoded it anyway, cause I'm a nerd and I like games that have secret languages like Fez, phenomenal game because I could just spend all of my time cracking like the 18 different codes that were in it. But that will make it much easier the second time. Soundtrack. Dang. Okay, well, first of all, look at yourself. There you are. Hello. Uh, second of all, look at the, the graphic design of this game. It's one of my favorite things in the world. It's dark and mysterious, but ethereally beautiful and touching. The music is by Disasterpiece, who coincidentally enough is the same person who composed the soundtrack for Fez. Two of my favorite video game soundtracks of all time. Atmospheric Electronica. It's just, it's just pretty. It's just pretty. Everything about it's pretty. Look at that, man. I, uh, I cannot be more excited. There's even like, there's text here. I wanna know what this says. Let me translate it real quick, hold on. T-Y-S-C-O-N-U. That doesn't mean anything. <laughs> what did I do wrong? <laughs> Wait, oh no, that's a D. Oh, it says disc one, don't it? Yeah, that makes more sense. Disc one, disc two, you know, I'll get better at that. And then I bet this right here, no, what does that say? Oh, original soundtrack. Oh, that makes me happy. Oh, that makes me so happy. Oh, what's on the front say? Oh, that, that also says original soundtrack as you could probably have guessed if you weren't stupid like me. Okay, here is the poster, which if you pause the video and went and watched the trailer, like you should have, you will recognize this image um, as one of the like trademark images of the game. It was one of the very first pieces of art ever put out and it's just, it's beautiful. You're gonna hear me continue to use the word beautiful a whole lot in this here video, in this, uh, in this vi videographic experience that I've put together today. Nothing makes me more nervous than cutting into something that's like rare and limited. My intonation on that sentence didn't make any sense. That was the whole sentence, but it sounded like there was a whole other clause coming afterward. I don't know what's wrong with me. I know I said this didn't really matter, but I realized the instruction manual is of course inside the, the case. Oh. Okay, first off, they went to the trouble of actually putting like little information inside the case, which hardly anyone does. The game card is beautiful. And the instruction manual, it's so little, it's so little. Okay, um, and there's like, there's some language on the back that I could translate if I really wanted to. I'm, I'm gonna do all these things, just not necessarily on camera. So here's my deal about instruction manuals. If y'all are my age or approximately my age or older, you'll know that every game used to come with a big old beefy boy like this. 20 to 30 pages, some glossy JPEGs, loads and loads of text, just so much stuff packed into this dang thing. And you'd get the game and you'd open it and you would both learn how to play the game, see lots of awesome art of the game you were about to play, of what characters looked like, of what locations looked like, of what items looked like. I'm specifically thinking of the Zelda Ocarina of Time manual because I spent so much time reading that thing. It was both a how to play the game and a companion to the game that with the limited hardware of the time being unable to fully flesh out the world of the games you were playing in, the instruction manual did a lot of heavy lifting to give you backstory, to give you character descriptions, to give you motivations, to, to help you immerse yourself in the world. And at some point, I guess people decided, we got beefy 4K renders, we don't need any of that garbage, so we're just gonna not put in the effort and the time and admittedly the wasted paper. But that makes me so sad because I have wonderful memories that are not all that unrecent of spending minutes to hours pouring through these things and just loving the world, wanting to know what do, what does the hook shot look like in its non polygonal 64 bit graphics beauty. I just, I just wish that I didn't have to buy a special edition to get a little, a little piece of that back. But I guess we'll, we'll flip through here real quick. It's not that long. Hyperlight Drifter Game Manual Special Edition. There's a nice little art 
of the drifter. There's some controls. So there are these secret monoliths in the game and apparently they decided to go ahead and just put all of them in the instruction manual so that you don't have to find them. Oh, you know what? I bet these are clues on where to find them. Here's another ferret looking dude. Oh, that's the sword master. Hence the sword master will teach you new techniques. There's different strikes you can, uh, can unlock, different movement abilities, dash upgrades, different weapons you can unlock. Okay, just take a second and appreciate that pixel art for those different weapons. They all consist of like, I don't know, maybe, maybe 200 pixels and they're all distinct and they're all gorgeous. Oh man, I'm, oh, I'm so excited to bust this game back open. The special shop, the apothecary. It's got a little tiny baby world map. Look at that. Oh, it's so great. I feel like I'm reading a book to children. And then credits. Oh, fun fact, also because I kickstarted it, my name is in the credits of the game, which is pretty dope. Oh, that, that's $60 well spent. I'm really happy with that collector's edition. Dang, that is a good collector's edition. Let me make sure I didn't miss anything, but I don't think I did. Hello? Nope, it's good. So what is this game? I already sort of described the genre, but the story, you're playing as this guy who's called The Drifter. Um, as far as I know, he doesn't have a name or anything. He's dying and he's traveling across this world that has just been utterly ravaged by some sort of affliction trying to find a cure. It's melancholic and it's contemplative, it's cathartic and it's just absolutely beautiful. I actually did a let's play through of the beta because I was a beta tier Kickstarter backer way back in the day of Games in Life. So if you want to check that out, I suppose there's also a link up there for that. That's my video for this week. I just wanted to show you the cool thing that I bought that I'm really excited about. Maybe I'll go play it. I feel like I can always do a Let's Play after I've done a playthrough of my own, right? Right. Deuces. Deuces.